Hey guys, in this video I'm going to talk about how I would take my current stack, React, Express, and PostgreSQL, and put it on AWS. So here's what it would look like if I put this on AWS. These are the components I would use to put it out into production. And just a quick note, I'm not using server-side rendering. So things may differ if you're using server-side rendering and you want to do that with React. But right now I can with my React application, make it into a static HTML and JavaScript. So what I can do is actually I can serve this on S3, and you just have a static website, and it's super cheap to host on S3. Um, so that's what I really like about putting React here. Um, and then so I have CloudFront sitting in the front of this, and what CloudFront does is I actually have not tried this guy yet. I've tried these, all these guys. Haven't tried CloudFront yet because this is kind of an extra and you don't really need it if you have a small user base. Um, I see it as something I would need if I wanted to scale up to more users. Uh, my understanding is it helps spread the load of the uh, you know users coming to your website um, and handles that. And I think you could probably also get CloudFront for Elastic Beanstalk, not sure if that's something after research. But basically what I have done in the past, this guy's a maybe. When you scale up, you can add this guy in. But for sure, you have S3 sitting in the front. This is going to host your React application. So you're going to bundle your React application to stack HTML and CSS, or JavaScript too. And that's going to sit on an S3 bucket. And then that's going to serve you know, just those static files for you. And then for our Express server, uh, and our React's going to make calls to our Express server. And this is going to be in uh, EC2. Now, I'm saying Elastic Beanstalk here because this is what I like using because it just makes it really fast to set up the whole back end. This is what I consider the back end right here, uh, Postgres and EC2. So Elastic Beanstalk will set you up with a nice EC2 instance, um, install the software that you need really easy. And basically, this is just a virtual server. So this is a, com you could think of it as a computer running on someone else's you're running your code on someone else's computer and so express is running on someone else's computer you could think of and I'm using elastic beanstalk for that and then sitting in the back I'm using Postgres SQL and that is hosted on RDS so I believe it's relational data store is what it's called so each one of these guys is what I would use so react rest 3 elastic beanstalk for express and Postgres SQL is and RDS, you can host several different databases, so you can swap this out. Each one of these components can really be swapped out with any language you wanted to use. Um, if you're using Vue or Angular, I'm sure you could do static HTML as well and put it here. If you're using Django, Ruby on Rails, you could switch those out for Elastic Beanstalk here too. So this is kind of the generic front-end, back-end database. Or not, this is all considered, I consider back-end, so server database and uh, also good to note these are all pretty scalable so but I know these two for sure this one you pretty much just you don't really scale but this these two you set how much database storage you want how much CPU you want and as more people start using your site um, you can ramp up how much you're paying and how much CPU usage you're using so you pay as you are increasing um, yeah, so this is how I would set stuff up. Um, let me know what you think of this setup and if you would set it up differently and how you set up your AWS account for your React applications. I'm actually very curious uh, how other people do it. So thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.